In this video I will highlight some of the key questions that I get regarding droplet computing and hopefully you find this video of benefit. Thanks very much for watching. So the first thing I want to answer is what operating systems currently support droplet computing. So droplet is currently supported on four different OSs, Windows 10, Enterprise Linux, Ubuntu or Mac OS. Um, Droplet is installed natively on any of those four OS's. No need for any back-end infrastructure or additional hardware. We use the compute that's already in the device. And let's face it, the average device today has plenty of um, compute, CPU, GPU, and more often than not, a decent SSD. So, as I mentioned, the container is installed directly onto the OS. Once you've done that, you've created an empty container. Inside that empty container, you then uh, install any applications or plugins. And every time you do that, you change the golden image, same way you do on a, a desktop environment, physical or virtual. And there's a file within the droplet con um, software, which is called a .droplet file. And the dot droplet file uh, will change every time you make any amendments to that particular build. And as you do today, whether it's in physical or virtual, you can use SSEM or any other tools to um, roll out too many. So build once and deploy too many. Nothing different from what you're doing today. One of the big differences about droplet computing is um, how secure the actual container is compared to a normal desktop. Um, so a recent pen test was done on the container itself and the end results of that pen test are available. If you'd like to see them, reach out to me. But in a nutshell, what that um, pen test highlighted was anything inside the container was secure. Couldn't be seen couldn't be penetrated and that's a massive advantage if you have any applications that are holding you back from migrating to Windows 10 or achieving your Cyber Essentials accreditation which is probably the most common reason that I am having discussions with customers just now they have issues um, with legacy bespoke or alternatively they can't afford the Windows 10 version and um, rather than do a forklift upgrade and spend money on a new colour background with some new buttons. They want to keep it the way it is today, lock it down and spend that money elsewhere. Droplet absolutely ticks the boxes there because of its approach. So hopefully that answers the use cases and how it works. What I want to do now is actually show you how easy it is to install software once you've actually got the container up and running. As you can see, I'm already running, running Droplet and I'm running on a MacBook, one of the OS's that are currently supported. I'm also already logged in as an administrator, just purely for speed for the video. I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer and as you can see, it's a very common Windows Explorer. Um, so rather than open up my shared file, I'm going to open up, I've cut and pasted from my shared file, I have some install media. And from there, I've copied that into my documents. I could run it straight from the shared file, but I put it into my documents. I'm going to install Notepad just as an example to show you the process. Simply double click, hit next, agree, next, next, install. So nothing different there than what I would do if I was running this natively on an endpoint device. The process is identical. So rather than um, run that, what I'm now going to do is, I've installed the application, I'm going to move to my front screen, and I'm going to create one of these tiles f specifically for launch pad, um, notepad so that I can launch it. So let's show you how easy that is. Simply give the tile a name, and then type in the executable path and then give it a description if you want um, 
here you select an image now here's one I did earlier obviously Microsoft PowerPoint I've, I've used that icon there as my tile I've done the same thing with Notepad++ on my, on my MacBook I have saved a couple of images of apps that I'm going to install click on that one that's the one I've, I want it will give me a preview of it and if I'm happy with it click finish Notepad++ is there hit launch and as you can see the application is very responsive and it just works inside the MacBook I'm running Notepad++ in my Windows container uh, uh, on, on my MacBook now as I said that was a quick demo of how to do it the same would apply with all four operating systems the process is the same there's no difference and likewise that Notepad++ app could be any app it could be a bespoke app that you've got in house it could be an app that you don't want to upgrade to the Windows 10 version because you want to save money and you want to lock it down securely or it could be an app that's stopping you from running on Windows 10 because it's not compatible either way there's lots of use cases hopefully you found this video beneficial and of use and if you did please hit the like button if you'd like to test Droplet or if you have any questions on Droplet please reach out to me Thanks very much for watching.